batteries how big are they actually going to get for our mprc cars the toxicity within our hobby all of a sudden everybody's a philosopher on facebook and all that usual fun stuff that we do i'm chad this is the dorky m40 rc channel and we are going to get fast on facebook today so let's go so what is up all 8900 of you guys and gals thank you for stopping by the channel again hope you are all having a good day facebook honestly was relatively quiet i think this week i didn't see a whole lot of drama until like literally the past couple hours when mark vine started putting up some posts we'll go over that not quite sure what that's going on but i want to start off with talking about something cool and that is kind of really blowing my mind here and what i want to talk about is batteries so have you seen the size of these new max amps pack these packs here this is their 1050 and i think tim smith said that it is comprised out of 10 uh well that'd be 10 1000 uh and five 1010 10 500 yes 10 10 500 yes 10 1050 cells so that thing is a uh the thing is a beast there and when you look and compare that to something like the r1 batteries which we got to scroll down here a little bit to get to you know these r1 batteries here's their 11 400 and their 15 200 which again sold out in like a minute it's like everything that comes out for this hobby sells out in like three minutes so pretty crazy but obviously they're still using way larger cells and i always wondered back and forth when i first started playing with these batteries last year is and i always wondered what performed better something like my big max amps pack that was comprised of more smaller cells versus something like this r1 and my trinity pack which is comprised of less bigger cells and of course they're all just wired in parallel no big deal uh you know it always seems to me though from when you wire up more stuff like this of course you've got more chance of a cell going bad which means that your battery itself could go bad now max amps does warranty their batteries for the most part um, I'm not sure what their current policies are on drag racing batteries. I mean, when you start getting into like this 270 to $300 battery range, whether you're dra they're building it for drag racing. So I'd have to look and see, or maybe you should too, to see if they would actually cover it. If one of those cells went bad in that battery, the only thing is, is like, Besides it actually puffing or looking odd, I don't really know how you're ever gonna check that because you hook it up to a balance checker, it's still gonna show up as a two cell battery. I suppose one of the cells would be out of balance or something, but you just don't know how these things are wired up, but the battery technology is definitely cool, you know? You know I'm gonna try at least to go in for the opposite direction. It was worth the 60, 70 bucks to try out for you. My boy Power Mad runs this thing. I still see that he is still flip-flopping back and forth between the bigger battery and the small battery, him and his wife's car, and they bo both perform equally well. I mean, it, it doesn't seem that he has really laid out a conclusion, and he's kind of like our best tester that we have out there right now of like a bigger battery like the Trinity that I typically run versus this. Now, this might not do as good in a car like mine since I'm at like 2,700 grams, and he is way closer to minimum weight. I think his car is like around 2,200, 2,300 grams. So yeah, these batteries, pretty cool stuff, man. We will see how it goes. I mean, Nikki here is saying that it's not that big of a difference. I uh, does like the eight gauge wire though. Um, 456 grams on the 11, 400 and 610 grams on the 15, 200. So I guess we would just really need to have those equally in the cars and just have people just running them over and over and see exactly what is happening with those things. So now we're gonna get a little bit into some Facebook philosophy. And for those of you, like uh, a few of you I know comment that you really like listening to these because you're not on social media. In fact, I know a couple of you actually, I need to send a message to Jeff Zuccarell because you wanna get in touch with him with, for Get Stuck. So Jeff, if you're watching this, I need to know how to get in touch with you so people can order stuff without messaging you. If you have an email or something, I'm actually going to send you a message right now. But yeah, Mark Vine, he comes on every once in a while and you know, he always drops these posts that uh, I don't really know what's going on here, but he's talking about, you know, let's say that what if we had a product and 
you, there was only a hundred of them that we can make and you needed this product essentially to win event. Like if you didn't have this product, whether it be battery, motor, chassis or whatever, that you just didn't have a chance at winning. Um, it's almost like he is, I don't know if he's calling somebody out or whatever. Like there's like literally 75 to hundred and some comments, depending upon what board you posted it on. So I'm real curious. A lot of people are, thinking that maybe he is looking at finally dropping his chassis and maybe that is true. We always heard that he was working on something special uh, with the, the actual five, seven guys and the Apollo and we'll see where that goes. Or is he talking about a new motor that's out? Like I don't understand, but you know, my point being about all this, which is kind of a mute point now because it really doesn't matter is that, you know, in the rules it plainly states commonly available parts you just none of this stuff that all these top people were running most of it it wasn't commonly available um people were running stuff that they weren't even sponsored by because they wanted to win so the rule book is pretty much thrown out the window when it comes to that kind of stuff you know which is fine a lot of this stuff i you know any of us can acquire all the any of this stuff i'm lucky enough that you know that if i wanted to my boot is to get here now. I'm sure I could go online and find some and pay way overpriced for them, but I wouldn't do that for you guys because I try to stay true to the channel here and I don't want to spend all that money on, you know, senseless stuff. I'd like to try to keep it as common as I can. Unfortunately, there is a money limit that you have to spend, in my opinion, to get to like a certain level, you know, but that's just kind of how it, where it is. So I'm trying to find that balance. Of course, we'll add the DR10M coming here, which hopefully will be that game changer that will allow people just to have more fun. And that's what I always try to preach here on the channel is to go out and have fun with your buddies. By the way, I did get the call and we will be going out this coming weekend. So I'm super excited to just go out and rip the car with my buddies. I just put another coat of the uh, Wild Awesome Performance on my tires. Um, it got them all spit shined up and heated up and it's they're over there in the bag. So pretty excited about that. We'll be getting out and testing those things out and having some fun. Got all my pinion gears. Thanks to all you guys for reaching out to uh, send me five millimeter pinions. And there was actually some discussion from uh, Stu and a couple other people that Castle actually does sell an adapter for the rotor that will allow you to use uh, the smaller 3.1 millimeter pinions um, at no performance loss, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. I They were commenting back and forth and it was kind of happening either late last night or while I was at work or something like that. And I kind of like got lost in the shuffle. But yeah, a lot of these Facebook posts, guys, you know, like the, I, I try to ignore all these that uh, start with, now, what if there was this, or what do you guys think about that? Like people trying to like reinvent the hobby, or I don't know, like I really don't know what people do all day that they have time to come up and just put something out there and just kind of talk about it all day and just reply over and over and over. Um, it's just crazy sometimes the notifications that you get from some of these groups. Luckily, I have a lot of them turned off. So um, a lot of people have been, uh, I've seen, have been getting a Futaba 10 PXs this week, you know, which is an awesome looking radio for sure. Uh, the M17, of course, we know just has so many more tuning variables that is built into it compared to the Futaba. I know people do very well with the Futaba um, and that you can do some of those things, but you know, as far as what it comes to what information's out there, you know, at least what I could provide and what other people have provided, the M17, again, just kind of stands a cut above. And I did see a post on here the other day, it might have been yesterday, of uh, someone that was actually, we were they were talking about real data, and it kind of got into like a really, really good uh, discussion about how the, what they were looking at um, adjusting the point feature on the actual Futa on the, the M17 itself. You know, the point feature, some people think of it as like a launch percentage. And I, I've always said like the best way to think about it is like a launch power percentage and not like a starting point because, you know, basically what it does is it kind of takes your linear line here and it basically squeezes it over. So you're doing less in the same amount of time as far as how fast it's getting to 100. So it's not really applying 30% throttle and then going up. It's basically 
chopping off and increasing your increasing or decreasing your actual throttle resolution by 20 or 30 percent by just kind of getting rid of that instantaneously and then affecting the ramp from you know say 20 to 100 or 30 to 100 whatever you have your point set at seeing a lot of people talking about uh, running uh, hobby wing escs lately that's pretty cool to see i mean this guy here is running a 2.0 at 68 miles per hour with an XR10 Pro. I mean, way to go, Justin. That's pretty good, man. I like that. I love Hobby Wing stuff. I wish they would like unlock like full power or build some kind of big powerhouse ESC and get in the drag racing game. Uh, they obviously have a lot going on. And, uh, you know, we all know now with everything that's going on overseas, that innovation is literally going to be stifled and we're going to be lucky to see anything probably the rest of the year. So what we got is what we got. And we're just going to have to all make the best of it. That is for sure. So there's a lot of people that are, uh, you know, again, the, the, the tire traction type of stuff and all that is going on. And I've seen a lot of different things that are going with that. Some people that are selling out over on the McLean group. There was uh, some people posting some tunes here. Rusty Brooks was posting a tune uh, his 186 tune that he's got going on. He accidentally switched a couple numbers there. People were kind of giving him some grief on that. So good discussion of final drive ratio on how he had such a low final drive ratio um, and he's able to get out of the car what he can get. 11.7 um, on that. You know, most of us are, I think, around 13-ish on our uh, B6 transmissions, if I'm not mistaken. Looks like uh, Jeremy Joseph Olson OKO finally killed their McLaren DRK, saying it was their fault. and. Uh, Sounds like they had, uh, I'm not sure, a couple things went wrong. Motors can end bell was not tightened. So looks like they had some setup issues or something like that and, that and a possible crash. And that's what blew up the ESC. So, you know, good for them. Good on you, kid. I'm so glad that you and your dad are out there doing this together. I know your dad really looks after you and, uh, you know, is letting you have some fun. You're very lucky to have a dad that will take you out there and do things like this. I'm not saying my dad was not a great dad. He was, he's a great father, but uh, you know, he was not into this kind of stuff. I guess that's why I have such a problem, right? Make it up for lost time. Still is on the daily though, that we see the same thing, uh, you know, flashing blue lights and beeping, no throttle. You know, the ESC's done, man. Like, it's just unfortunate that, again, it, it's like we talk about it every week. I really hope they get a batch out sometime that corrects all their problems because, you know, the DRK, and I've said it before, is, you know, I think great to get fast, the fastest. Is it the fastest? Well, not currently. It hasn't won the big races this year. But, you know, you see people doing some pretty respectable times. You know, Power Mad dropped his in his, and I think he's at uh, 199, somewhere like that, and he's got like a week or two on it. Hasn't done a whole lot with the motor and stuff yet that he just got, just learning about stuff. So a lot of cool bodies going on, a lot of cool paint jobs. Uh, not a lot of racing. So, um, oh, here's that chassis that we talked about last week. This is the Morbo Racing chassis which is unfortunate. I reached out to them uh, to see if they would, uh, you know, provide one here to us for us to take a look at, send it back to them, whatever. Uh, no response. So big time, you know, big time downer. Like these people just want to give people to win races. They could care less. It looks like about the average person, you know, I'm trying to like give people options of things to buy. I guess they really don't need a person yet to like push stuff for them or whatever. But, you know, I'm trying, guys, uh, thanks to the people that have sent stuff out to the channel, and I hope that you guys don't forget them. Most of their links are going to be down below. So your GNSS power cables, your motor sleeves, and, of course, Get Stuck Prep. So don't forget to support those guys. Barth Racing Concepts of, as well. If you guys hate glue and tires, Tim will do a great job for you valve them, air, all that kind of stuff. Whatever tires you got or you want him to try to get for you, he will get them done for you.
and there's been a lot of positive reviews on his stuff. Break him in for you, all that kind of stuff. And it takes time and work and money. He's got the tools, so there you go. It's kind of a scary sight when you start seeing a lot of these waffles and waffle channels like pop up. I know I was part of one for like a couple weeks, and I don't know if I just quit getting notifications for it or if it fell off the radar or got shut down or whatever, but between the waffles and all of the philosophy discussions, that is kind of a scary moment of time for us because I've seen this happen. Of course, you've probably seen stuff like this happen in RC as well, you know, with the FPV, the you know, the toxic community and like the discussions and the hatred and stuff like that. So I try to stay off of here and just bring you guys the facts, but I know a lot of you guys know that this stuff just generally goes on, goes it goes on on Facebook anyway. Um, unfortunately, from what I see and comments that I see coming into my channel a little bit more often now, we still have a pretty like a 90 some percent positivity rate from my standpoint, except for the tire prep video that we did the other day must have actually got flagged as a real drag tire prep. And some guy told us that we needed to quit playing with our toys and grow up. Who, who says that? I mean, he's the one that didn't read that it said dorky N40 RC. I mean, geez, guy. Reaction blue dots. I think these things are out there somewhere. People have some of them. I know they've been shipping very limited quantities. I'm excited to get a hold of these just like I am my voodoos. Um, I like this uh, LA Racing DIY tire can, another one of those things that you guys can, you know, a little home uh, innovation going on here to help uh, automatically set up your tires and, you know, do your break in and your prepping and stuff like that. If you're uh, interested in doing that stuff yourself, again, a little bit of money involved there. So if you don't have the drill and the compounds and all that stuff, you can always reach out to somebody like BRC. And I guess we'll just go ahead and close it out. Of course, we talked about, and I listened to this and did a video on it, about uh, Mark Vine's uh, tire prep uh, stuff that he did last week on the Desert Hobby Show. You know, I really... I really like Mark Vine. You know, I've never met him. He seems like a great guy, but I really like that how he seems to be, you know, pretty honest with what he's talking about and what he's doing. I think he knows that he could tell us every secret in the book that he's allowed to, that he's probably not, you know, under an NDA about. And, you know, he knows that, like, it doesn't mean that Chad's going to come out here and just whip his ass every time if he tells me how to do things. Like, you've got to put in the time and the effort and you got to have the equipment and everything else. So I really love when he does... You know, I wish he did what we did. I know he doesn't have the time and stuff like that. I need to reach out to him sometime and just see if he would be willing to talk, you know, and just tell us about like the actual, like what he does to his, you know, whatever, you know, like it was great listening to him on that Desert Hobbies podcast. I recommend any of you guys listen to that, you know. The first 15 minutes of him talking and like the last 10, 15 minutes are really great. You know, there was like an hour in between there where really it just turned into kind of like an infomercial for Monster Grip. But in the end, I think he pretty much said that uh, he believes that, you know, Get Stuck is probably one of the best tire preps that you can have in your bag because it will get you down 90% of the roads, 90% of the time, hot, cold, or whatever. Now, you know, of course, everybody wants to have all this different stuff inside of their bag to play with and test and have fun and, you know, do all that kind of stuff, kill brain cells and everything. But, uh, you know, we're looking for something easy and something consistent, and that's what I'm trying to bring with you guys. Last year, I ran the reaction times and the tire bands. I've already told you guys what we've done to change the tire program this year. We're going to step it up a little bit, and I'll step it up on a level and then try to keep it at a basic level for guys that just want to go out and have fun and see what the difference is, you know, for your average racer. And then how much you guys actually want to apply to your program, that's going to be up to you. Uh, for example, I was really not interested in doing the whole heat gun thing with the generator and everything else. I've got power inverters and all that stuff, and that might work, but I'm going to try one of the cordless ones and just see how well it works. It doesn't seem like it's going to work that well, but it was a cheap enough investment or actually my buddy's got one and he's going to let me use it and try it and we'll see how it goes um you know trying to just make things easy and you know not have to pack up an entire trailer to take out to go race with your friends you know i wish i could did that and was going state to state doing all these races and stuff sometimes 
but you know we'll go to a couple races but i still just i want to be prepared for that weekend racing with my friends and i want to be competitive and i want to do good and i want to learn as much as i can and pass it on to you guys so i think that's going to do it for this show Kind of like a lot of Chad talking about nothing, which is great because I can talk and I can talk about nothing for even longer. So we will see you guys on the next episode. It should be outside stuff, or maybe we'll talk about the car one more time before we go outside, just in case we crash it. She really looks good. I'm pretty stoked. So we'll, yeah, we'll do that. We'll talk about the beginning setup and how we're going to take it off the trailer, remote settings and everything else, and what kind of times we're shooting for, hopefully, um, with that new castle in there and everything else. So we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.